Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Curry, filling in for Jenny Taft. On today's show, are we seeing an entirely new LeBron James? Plus, Sinbad is on set discussing his new show on Fox, LeBron's Lakers, and more. And what would Jerry Jones pay for the Cowboys to win another Super Bowl? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. LeBron's new show, The Shop, premiered on HBO last night. Guests included Odell Beckham Jr., Snoop, Draymond Green, and Jon Stewart. In one part of the show, LeBron talks about the double standard between himself and star athletes who are white. LeBron said, quote, I believe if the greatest quarterback in the world, he's a white quarterback, if it's Tom Brady, if it's Aaron Rodgers, if it's Peyton Manning, and we're doing the same bleep, the same exact bleep, refusing to take a picture with a fan, I'm talking about the phone is on. We're like, yo, get that bleeping phone out. Out of my face, I'm with my family. If we're out with our family and we say that bleep and somebody posts it, and if Aaron Rodgers or one of those guys say that bleep and they post it, somebody's going to be like, hey, you guys should respect Aaron Rodgers. They're going to say to us, they're bleeping bleep heads. Now we are joined by Rob Parker. Rob, what is your take on that? What's happening, everybody? Good morning. Good morning. morning. What up, Detroit? You know this touches me deeply. Mm -hmm. Skip, I've owned a barbershop in Detroit, Mm -hmm. Shannon, for 16 years. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Sporty Cuts on Mm -hmm. Seven Mile Row. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I did a local TV show in my barbershop for years. Mm -hmm. So this is the place where guys really like to chop it up and and hash out Mm -hmm. stuff and whatnot. So it's a great place to really have a show. It really is. This show, Skip, you've always said, is like a barbershop on television. Yep. Where you were just kicking it around and talking about stuff. There's two things I saw with this. I saw groundbreaking from this standpoint, the language that you don't normally hear LeBron use. Not that no one doesn't think he curses or most, most guys or most people have a different conversation from the one that they have if they're on television or doing some sort of job. So that was just different to hear him say mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. The other part though, I, I didn't think there was anything groundbreaking as far as dialogue. To sit there and complain about signing autographs and whether it's a black athlete or white athlete. Is there a double standard in this world? I think yeah. we all agree. Would you agree? Yep. Yeah. I don't think I need... It's nothing earth-shattering. You don't think it's earth-shattering to hear him say it? No, because I think that people have said it before. Michael Jordan ever said it? People They're have, magic. But people uh, not, not people. No, 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 Rob. You got to put it in context. I'm talking about, but it's been written about and talked about. Okay, maybe I'm not, I heard it out of LeBron's mouth, mm-hmm. but I, it, it doesn't mean that he just said something that people don't already know about, about a double standard. What the difference between Skip and I. That's what, what I'm we, saying. What people say about Skip and I, we say things that they're thinking. LeBron said what was being thought. That's you don't true. think Michael thought that? You don't think uh, 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 Magic thought that? Sure, but did they say it? But I'm, but I'm just saying from, okay, you, you talk about, yes, there's a double standard. Yes. All I'm saying is that that's not breaking news to anybody. And you're right. Okay, maybe I never heard LeBron really say it, but did I ever think that he didn't feel that way, that there's right. a... Double stint. So that's all I'm saying is that I wasn't bowled over like, oh my God, LeBron thinks that he's treated differently from other people. I don't, I don't know anybody who would think right. that. So that's, that's the other part. And the other part was, as usual, I think it shows how sensitive modern athletes are. Mm-hmm. And Odell Beckham Jr. said it. Oh, he refuses to give an autograph and he goes to Twitter and the guy's ripping him. Dude, you just decided not to sign an autograph. So what are you worried about some sort of uh, being... Uh, why do I get labor because you, I don't sign an autograph? But why are you going to Twitter and worried about what someone would say? You just did, dis- decided... If you felt like you didn't do anything wrong, why would you care what's on Twitter? But this is that... That's the new ultra, medium, I, I, That's what I'm talking about. Ultra-sensitive cons- ultra, uh, about what people think about you. I remember something Michael Jordan said, and I'm not saying he was perfect and signed every autograph, mm-hmm. but he said... When I'm not in that mood, I just don't go out. Because yeah, nobody, and you know this, Shannon, yeah. nobody wants to be the day that they run into Michael Jordan and he's in a bad mood. Nobody's going to go like, oh, I understand that he's just having a bad day and it was just my bad luck. So he, so he would you, rather not go out and, and not put himself in there. And you see what we ask our athletes to do? Alter what you do during the course of the day. It comes with the pe- job. No, it no, comes no, with Rob, the job. Stop saying that, Rob. It does. Stop saying, no, it does not. It does. So, so if somebody comes up to you every day and says, hey, Rob, I need you to proofread this and get it back to me. It comes with the job, no, Rob. No, no, You're no, a reporter. No. That's not what You're a saying. reporter. All I'm saying is, you're Shannon, columnist. you know this, too. I, I, yes, I get it. But, but when you're I'm not saying you have to stop your meal 
and 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 interact with everybody who that's stopped what, you. That's what or he was somebody's saying. pulling over. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. No, I'm saying Braun. But, but but to have athletes sit around, like if I'm a fan watching, he they're complaining about uh, signing autographs. Like seriously, yes. that's the show. So what show no. number two? No, he that not. that you hate when people boo. What? Is that is that show two? Rob, skip. Rob. Oh, it's terrible that I'm they so, boo I'm, us. I'm, I'm, a- I'm sorry. That's all you got out of that show was that they were complaining about signing autographs because I think I can attest to skip I can talk speak for skip mm-hmm. on this. I think we got a little bit more out of it than they're just complaining about the signing of autographs and taking pictures. That, that was a small point. Small, go ahead. Small point. Yeah. My thing is is that for me is that what's being expected of what why is there a double standard? Because blacks are supposed to be grateful for anything they have. I'm with you 100%. I'm not arguing that at all. Right. I, I, as a writer, when, when I became right. a columnist, yes. all right, there were 10 black sports columnists for 1,600 daily newspapers in the United States. When they hired me at the Detroit Free Press, I was the first black sports columnist. The paper was 161 years old. Mm. So I get it. And, and do you think I was held under different standards? And what what I was supposed to do, and if I sent in typos or made mistakes, it would be doubly if another guy did a white guy who just had a bad day. He would have a bad day. I'm not qualified. So so I get that. I get that. All all he's doing, he's speaking to the double standard. And he's saying, and and there's there's a racial element to this. You know it because you just mentioned it. If a white guy had those same typos, he would not be as harsh. He had a bad day. As, as you were. But the, the ungratefulness, because we see that with the anthem, you're making millions. Why, 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 you, why you got to kneel? You're making millions. What is it to sign an autograph or take a picture? We are supposed to be grateful because really, you know, you're not supposed to be in that situation. Because that's what I mean to make a long story short. You're really not supposed to be in that situation. So you should be grateful that you're in a situation. No, 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 no. I'm allowed to have a bad day. Contrary to what you think, because I play a sport, that doesn't mean I'm not human. I have moments. Everybody has moments. So allow me to have a few mo- a special moments. The guy can barely go out. How often do you think LeBron takes it? He don't take his family out like a normal person. He doesn't no. have that luxury. He can't go to, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to I pick. I'm going to the movie theater. But if, but if no. he wants to promote something or, or blaze pizza, it's okay for him to tweet out and mm. tell everybody to show up? So, so, you, so when you want people to react to you and, and, and move, it's okay. But if I am just happen to be out and I just happen to see you, you're my favorite player, it's a crime for me to really think that I shouldn't ask you. So in every player, I'm not saying that you can't say. Okay. You, you, you we, can't have it right. both ways. We, we, we see that, this differently. All. all right. So I'm going to go bigger picture here. From my perspective, my two cents... I was stunned by the LeBron I saw for the 27 minutes of this show because this was a dramatic and calculated shift for this man. Mm -hmm. And I liked what I saw because this was real, raw, unplugged, extremely profane Mm -hmm. LeBron James trying to send a message, F all of this, I don't care about my popularity anymore. I'm reading between the lines. I'm not going to protect all my endorsements anymore. I'm going to tell you what I really think Mm -hmm. about race relations in this country. And I believe that LeBron James, feel free to disagree, has been mostly beloved by white America. Of course. Right? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, but I think black people like LeBron. No, no, but I'm saying, I'm just speaking for white America. I think white America has mostly loved LeBron. Mm -hmm. And I think the white media has mostly adored LeBron James. So he's gotten a pretty good ride from the white community. Mm -hmm. And yet, the LeBron I was listening to last night came across as not much liking or trusting white people. That's how it came across. I'm fine with that because I think he learned not to trust growing up. Well, you heard him. He mentioned it. He did. He says, I'm up here, Mm. but when I get home, I got the end painted on my my gate. That is correct. He says, so no matter how high I think I am, how much influence I have, they have to send that subtle reminder to let you know. You know? Yeah. So, I'm going to read a quick quote from LeBron from last night. He said that, I was raised on Snoop and Pac and Jay and Biggie, and now I get an opportunity to be the inspiration around what all these kids are looking up to. Yeah, so he's, he's really embracing the platform that he has. And he says, and for me to just sit back and not say bleep, when a lot of my peers didn't say bleep, 
Okay, now I think we're bringing Michael Jordan into play here. And obviously, I think LeBron has been haunted by chasing that ghost, as he says, in Chicago. And again, we disagree on this, but just for the sake of this conversation, I don't think he's ever going to catch him because three and six in the finals, it's hard to compete with six and oh. Mm -hmm. But can he catch him off the court? He can not only catch him, he can trounce him off the court because LeBron can become a powerful spokesman for a black community that needs a powerful spokesman mm -hmm. right now. I don't, now, di help, I don't, dis I don't okay. disagree with that okay. from, now, from the standpoint. And, and Skip, you know, Michael Jordan was criticized for never saying anything. Not, his, not fam not. his most famous quote is Republican buys, Republicans buy sneakers too. He, he didn't say that to the but media. You know, he said it to a friend, friend. and it got And it got out. Yeah. But okay. you know yeah, what I mean? I, but that, right. That's a famous... Okay. It, okay. It's an infamous right. statement. Right. But what's not infamous, when they ask him about the Rodney King beating, he didn't comment because he needed more facts, more info. Well, well we had the video. You don't need any, what, There's no more facts you need to see okay. other than the so, video. Michael, that was Michael, though. I, I, out of his way to protect his Disney-like image and brand. Mm -hmm. And after every game, Michael insisted on going in and showering and dressing to the nines, he putting did. the earring back in yep. before he presented himself to the media because he wanted everybody to see him at his very best. Last night, LeBron wanted everybody to see him as what he really is and always has been. Mm -hmm. And I don't love the language, but I think he wanted to get everybody's attention. I think he wanted to speak the language a lot of a lot of black and white kids who speak that language. Yep. He wants to cut through and say, I'm here, and I have a message to deliver, and I have the platform from which to deliver it, and I'm willing, he's saying between the lines, to risk my endorsements with Sprite or Kia or whoever it might be, because some of those people won't love that show last right. night. They just won't. That was raw, man. But maybe, but maybe that's the difference in the way okay. you saw it and I saw it as a black person watching. Like, most of that stuff is stuff that I've talked about or seen mm -hmm. Right? right? Well, you okay. and, and and for you, Skip, like to see LeBron. Like, I'm not shocked. It's HBO. This is what they do, right? Yeah. They they ratchet it up, unfiltered. But have you ever That's seen what, LeBron? No, like no, that? no, no, no. I saw him tell his mother uh, in a game to sit her blank down. Mm -hmm. Right? Didn't he we did. see her? He did say yeah. that. So right. I got a glimpse there. Mm -hmm. And I've been but around. This other... was a lot of f that. No, I know f it was. That. It was definitely yeah. that part where you just normally don't hear him say it. I'm just curious to see what show number two is going to be about. That's all. Because right. I just wonder how much of that, you know, and, and maybe he has some other stuff that's a little deeper. You know, at the barbershop, we don't talk about the same subject. No, Every no, I know. There, that's what I'm saying. I, mean, I remember growing up, go, growing up and my grandfather taking my brother and I, and I remember seeing the old men. Back then, there were porches. The barbershop was an actual yeah, house. I know, I know. And the old men were sitting on the porch playing checkers. Right. And it might be two or three groups yep. playing checkers. And, you know, you, they're sitting around... They're debating Ali, Foreman, and Frazier. The same way. Right. right. They're debating sports topics of, of back then. And I remember thinking, like, is, is that what I'm going to do when I get on? Am I going to go to the barbershop and debate? I, right. I, you know, I'm a little kid. You know, I just want to get my cut. So I go home and watch cartoons. Lo and behold, mm -hmm. here I am as an adult, and I'm going to the barbershop, and we're debating the same identical mm -hmm. thing. Just different people. Just different yep. people. So what did LeBron also say about the classic barbershop, there's always one guy who isn't there to get a haircut. Yeah. And he just sits there all day. That would be Is me. that you? Right? You don't yeah, want to get a I cut? I don't need my haircut. Yeah, you just want to hear what's right? going on? Yeah. No, I'm just... I, love, I go, I'm I go to Joan. I go to get a good Joan in every yeah. once in a while. You know? And there's a guy in Atlanta, Skip Bayless, uh, Carl Lee Booker. He owns yeah. Off the Hook. There's a gentleman by the name of Maurice Combs. I don't know how many people here he cut in the course of the day. Well, but he, I think he just goes to work. He losing customers because he roasting folks. Right. But that's what he does. And I go to roast him. I, I'll tell you, the barbershop of all the things I've done in my life, that opportunity that I to buy that shop was the best mm -hmm. thing I ever yeah. did. It really, I always felt I became a better reporter and columnist because I had a connection Stealing to... Stealing people material. What to, you no, mean? I always still know yeah, what it was, Skip. But Skip, right. I had a feel for what the fans, you know what I, I mean? Know. Like the real Joes okay. who you are paying did. their money. You did, but the topic was almost always in your barbershop, sports-related. Sports. And because of the man sitting in the White House right now, I think that has turned mm -hmm. political. Oh, there's no right? doubt that, there, that there's, okay. more. there's more. That's what was ratcheting up the... the 
energy last night. The the it is it, it was extreme. I don't know if you watched last night for the first time. The Florida might have a a black governor, um, mm -hmm. Gilliam Gilliam, mm -hmm. I think his name is. He won the Democratic primary. There's a gentleman just on today said, "Let's not monkey this thing up by electing him." <laughs> Let that sink in for a second now. I mean, he on that, he on live television. Mm. Say, don't monkey this thing up mm. by electing him. Really? That's why LeBron is doing what he's doing yep. now, Rob. Because he, for the longest time, our greats didn't speak like that. No, no, no. I, I got you. I just, I just hope it doesn't turn into a, a show where athletes complain about how tough it is to be a star. That, that's all. Okay. No, that, that's the show I don't want to see. Okay. No, they Which, gonna, can you buy? Can they you? They're gonna complain about what black the voice. No, I just, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just saying. I, hearing about signing autographs doesn't if, move. If you don't mind me asking, how did the guy get into the White House? Because people complained they weren't being heard. So LeBron is speaking for those that can't be heard. He's not necessarily talking about him. It's him talking. But there's a lot of complaints that's going on that affects the black community. I, I get but that. But they don't I, have a microphone. I get they that. They don't get cameras, Rob. Double sure. standard about uh, whether or not I get approved for a mortgage compared to Skip yep. is real. Yeah. Complaining about signing an autograph because you're out with your family, I'm sorry. Johnny Carson complained about that. I could tell you any celebrity, yeah. Yeah. Shannon, have all complained yeah. about It's not a black or white issue. It's just a celebrity issue. Would you agree? Yep. No, nah, Skip, you go I, out. I, I, People don't don't come up to your dinner table or come up to you. Yes, they do. Shannon, you're yeah. not stopped all the time. But what I'm saying, I told Skip, I get stopped. I'm not even on the show every day. I told Skip, I went to a restaurant. The gentleman was with his family. He finished eating first and then came when I got my meal, wanted to take a picture. And I told him, I noticed you waited till you finished your meal with your family. See, you wanted that quality time with your family, but you have nothing to care about my time. You see what he see? And that's all we're talking about. That's fair for you to ask. Just yeah, wait until yeah, we're finished. Yeah. yeah. I say, if you're still here when I'm done, yeah. took my time. Bro. I know you he, did. He, he, was, he, I know he, he was, did. He was still there. So and I, he waited I, the whole yeah. way for you to finish your yeah. steak. Yeah. And I'm normally a fast eater. So did he so. say that you forgot a piece <laughs> there or something? I took my time. I ate all my vegetables, too. <laughs> Oh, I love it. No, I think the, the good point of this is LeBron sparked a conversation, and that's yeah. what he wanted to do. And as you said, there's always that person in the barbershop who's not there to get their hair cut. We are now that person. The audience is that person. Hey. I'm not hating. Hey, skip. Skip. I think he's hating that thing because his, his show was local and brought it. <laughs> he wants to be the best. I ain't saying hey, that. He wants his was, shop to be the best. My show was good too. <laughs> Rob, was thank you so much for story. joining us. We really appreciate it. No mercy. The Dallas Cowboys have gone 22 seasons without a Super Bowl championship. Yesterday, Jerry Jones was asked what he'd do to guarantee himself another title. Take a listen. It would be shocking if you knew the size of the check I would write if it guaranteed me a Super Bowl. It would be obscene. There's nothing that I would do financially not to get a Super Bowl. Shannon, hmm. what does this tell you? Well, I'm not surprised that he said that, Skip. There are very few owners in professional sports that care more about winning than Jerry Jones. Mm. Um, not all the owners, and let's just take the NFL, um, care about winning like Jerry does. Some would just take their revenue share and be on their way. I'm good. Win a Super Bowl, that'd be nice. But if I don't, I'll take my $255 million cut nationally, and then whatever I can get in local revenue, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. But that's not Jerry Jones. And if we get lucky and break through, we got lucky. Okay, we got lucky and broke through. Okay. So, okay, yeah. we're good. I'll take that. Yeah. But if we don't, I'll mm -hmm. take my 255 also. Yep. Mm -hmm. Here's the question I would have liked to pose, mm -hmm. the, the reporter would have asked Jerry. Yep. Jerry, what if winning a Super Bowl meant that your players could kneel for the anthem? <laughs> you see, Skip, here's the thing with, with money. See, he could write a check because he's worth $5.6 billion. So money doesn't mean the same thing to him as it do you and I. Mm -hmm. So he can write a big, big check and not blink an eye. Mm -hmm. But in order for it to mean something, it's got to mean something to you. So the yep. flag and the anthem mean so much to you. If you would guarantee the Super Bowl, would you let your players kneel? That should have been the next question out of his mouth. And I don't know what his answer yeah, is. I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. You see, Skip, I believe if there wasn't a salary cap in the NFL, Jerry Jones, the Cowboys would be the Yankees. Mm -hmm. We know the Yankees. Now, they have curtailed that somewhat. Now the Boston Red Sox are the new Yankees. Yep. That They spend unlimited trying to assure themselves of a win. Yep. But that's the thing about sports, what we love, Skip. Mm -hmm. yep. There are no guarantees. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much money you spend. You can think you got the best running back, quarterback, off, five offensive linemen. Doesn't guarantee it. 
And that's what fans love. That's what we love about sports. The unpredictability of it. The non-guarantee mm -hmm. of what we think will happen. So I'm not surprised Jerry said that. You know Jerry better than I do. You're mm -hmm. not surprised. Yep. Maybe a little bit because you're like, well, Earl Thomas out mm -hmm. there. And it's not, you won't have to write. You have to write a, a fairly mm -hmm. nice size check mm -hmm. because you have to give, you don't have, have to sign him to a long-term deal. Would. But I'm not surprised Jerry said this. But when it's dealing with money, Skip, because he has so, so much of it, it wouldn't, if they say, Jerry, you got to write a check for 50 million, you got to write a check for 100 million. Jerry said, okay, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, as a matter of fact, I'm going to write to your account right now. You guarantee me a Super Bowl, 50, Super Bowl 53, mine. Here, here's 150 just to make sure you don't back up out of this deal. So I'm not surprised Jerry said that. I don't believe you're surprised either. <laughs> I wasn't surprised, but. I was just dumbfounded when I first read this quote last night as a longtime Cowboy fan. And now, I, dare I say, a long-suffering Cowboy fan? Because it's been a long time since they won a Super Bowl or even sniffed a Super Bowl. Right. And I, I sat back last night and just shook my head and said, that's the old Jerry talking, but the new Jerry doesn't walk his talk anymore <laughs> because the new Jerry Jones is, is more of just some John Jones or Joe Jones, just some guy, right? He's, he, he's fallen back into the ranks of those arch conservative owners to me who are more concerned with making money than winning championships because he's not putting his money where his mouth is right. because he's not a plunger anymore. He's not a risk, risk taker. There's no go for broke in this new Jerry. No. He, he appears to be resting on his new Hall of Fame laurels, right? He did mention that. Because there. just when I thought they were on the verge in the offseason and it's time for Jerry to plunge and go get him and write that check for him, they lost out in the bidding for Sammy Watkins, who went to Kansas City, and you brought up Earl Thomas. I just keep waiting and hoping and wishing and waiting, and nothing happens about Earl Thomas, right. who wants to be a Cowboy, reportedly could be had for a mere second-round pick. Then you'd have to write a check. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you'd have to pay him top safety money. I don't know. It'd be like $50 million guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Is that a huge? No, nah, not a huge check no. for Jerry. W would that be a Super Bowl-making potential move? Yes, it yes. would. Even you agree with that. Yes. Right? Yeah. You'd be a little nervous over there if I they would. signed Earl Thomas. The defense would be but nothing nothing appears to happen because Jerry seems to sit back and say, I trust my coaching staff. We got a new receivers coach named Sanjay Lal. I trust him. I, I don't need a new receiver because I got a new receivers coach. Can he play? No, he doesn't get to play. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, he's trusting Will McClay, his new draft master, because we got kids who are going to grow up and become stars. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so they go out in the offseason, and they get Tavon Austin, who was considered a bust with the Rams, right? Yep. And they get Alan Hearns and Deontay Thompson and various Dayton Joneses and Joe Thomases, just a bunch of guys, and they're all pretty jihad ward they trade for. But they're all just guys. You got deeper. Did you get that much better? I don't see it yet. So then it occurred to me, wait a second. Jerry is just talking hypothetically. And I know Jerry's talk because I interviewed him for literally hundreds of hours for the three books I wrote on the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And he can really spin those yarns, man. Mm -hmm. But you, you have to sift through all the verbiage because sometimes he's just talking out of his head like you can't figure <laughs> out where he's going so i want to remind everybody he went deeper in this radio interview on his radio gig in dallas and he, he talked about how he was talking about the man above and i th i think he's being real about it. I, oh yeah he what he believes he's saying that years ago i wanted the third super bowl remember he had fired Jimmy Johnson right. after two straight, mm -hmm. and he hired Barry Switzer. So he wanted Barry Switzer, his coach, to win the third Super Bowl. So he's saying he made a deal not with the devil to sell his soul. was it Faustian. He's saying he made a deal with the man upstairs, right. with God, to say, okay, just give me the third, and I'll never ask I'll, for anything again. Is, so he's saying... We've all done it, Skip. Okay. I haven't done that. Yeah, I, 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 I haven't. But God, if you get but, me out of this situation, yeah, I, know, I, know. I promise you and a few more gods just like you, I'll never be back in okay. one again. So so Jerry, is he, he truly believes God gave him the third. Yeah. And, and the quote is... And so I find myself trying to retrade that trade for the last 20-something <laughs> years. Okay, so when, when he's talking about writing a check, it's not against the salary cap. It's not for Earl Thomas. He's just doing the hypothetical. Right. If, if God came to him right now and said, Jerry, I need you to write a $1 billion check for a Super Bowl, would you do it? 
What, what you're saying, damn right I'd do it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. he'd, he'd, I don't know how many billions he's worth. 5.6. Is it 5.6? 5.6. Okay, would he write a $5 billion check? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't know. Want no, I don't want no super bad investor. No, no, I wouldn't let Jerry do that. Okay, you wouldn't let him, but would he do it? He Man, might. I, I think I'm he, talking about you got to write it to God. Yeah. You got to give him $5 billion. No, I'm going to need, I'm, no, you know what? Huh? If I write a five, if I'm worth $5 billion and I write that check, I need an interest to heaven. Okay. Damn a Super Bowl. Okay. I want to go to hell. Yeah, but you're not Jerry Jones. That's what I'm saying, though, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> what good is that? But, hey, but here's the I thing, though, Skip. Think about what the, what the Cowboys had in the 90s. The Cowboys could have been the Patriots before the Patriots were the Patriots. Absolutely. The difference is, is that Mr. Kraft is unconcerned about how he's viewed in... Or credit. Credit. That's the key word, is credit. That's he, the operative word. He's st- steady cutting checks. Yep. Well, Steady getting Super Bowls. He's unconcerned. Mm-hmm. And people are like, well, Jimmy had gotten to the point where he was just openly and blatantly disrespectful. Well, I can assure you if Mr. Kraft was having radio shows, TV shows, talking before the game, talking after the game, addressing the team before the coach addressed the team. You're right. Coach Belichick probably would have a problem yeah, with and, that. And you would clash. Yes. Just naturally you would clash right. because he's going to say something that he doesn't like or vice versa. Correct. And they're going to clash in philosophies at some point. Correct. But – Robert Kraft stays out of the way. Stays out of except it. Except for one magic what? moment, right? Well, and, and, he said, you know, you've got to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. That's the only time I think he's ever meddled or right. intervened or interjected. And right? it, was, it was after, think about it, Skip. That was after four Super Bowl wins and seven Super Bowl appearances. Yep. The Cowboys had just gone to two. They had just gone to two and won both of them. And Jerry, like, I, I need to get some of this because y'all are talking too much about Jimmy. Mm-hmm. I, I, need some, I need y'all to heap some of that praise on me. I brought the team. And, and, I brought Jimmy and in. The difference was, trust me on this, I was there. I watched it firsthand. Jerry Jones was the GM of that team. And on draft day, he was the final arbiter. He had veto power, and, and he said he could, he always told me, Al Davis taught me to coach the coach. Mm-hmm. So on draft day, he could say, Jimmy, back off. No, no, that's too much, too much. Or Jimmy would say, how about this? Okay, okay, go, go. Right. So he would have final say. Mm-hmm. And he pulled off the Charles Haley trade, and it was, it, it was a Super Bowl maker. Right. That was from Jerry. Right. So he won a credit for that. Right. Can you blame him? No. But is it, is it going to fall apart? Yeah. Yes. Be- but you know what got this mm-hmm. started yeah. is when Jimmy pulled off that Herschel Walker trade. Mm-hmm. That started everything. Because it got you Emmett, it got you uh, 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 Russell, Maryland, mm-hmm. it got you uh, Woodson, it mm-hmm. got you all those. That deep- By the way, they swung and missed on a lot of those, but yeah. it didn't matter because they had so many. They ha- you yes. Could, you could miss. Yes. Yep. And so that was the thing. Mm-hmm. All Jerry had to do was just stand pat. Yeah. Just ride this wave, get you by four, five of them things, and then if you want to blow it up. But it all came so easily, so quickly for, for everybody he made it look that, that he thought, oh, well, this is going to last forever, so I can do whatever I want to do. I can fire. What's his famous word, Skip? Well, I know one famous line was 500, 500 coaches, coaches can coach this team to a Super Bowl. Well, Jimmy said, you better get 499 because I'm up out of here. I know. That's right. <laughs> and, and I thought, as much as I love Barry Switzer, but he'd been out of coaching for two years mm-hmm. and hadn't coached a single down the National Football League. I thought he was 501 on that list, right? right? And he did pull it off, but maybe it was from God. I don't know. That's what Jerry says. Well, that was the best thing to happen because yeah. the Cowboys, gonna be, they were about to run rough shot. They, mm-hmm. were, they were about to do in the 90s what the Patriots have been doing since 2001. Okay. So where is their Charles Haley move? Where is the Dion move? That, that, by the way, Jerry pulled off Dion. Yeah. That was all Jerry. Yeah. Okay. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the well, new Jerry. You know, uh, but a part of me, Skip, is looking at Jerry. Jerry's like, okay, you were the most valuable team in all the pro sports, North America, around the world. We're, we sell more merchandise mm-hmm. than anybody. Yeah. We're the number one team. Pe- more people want to watch us when we own than anybody. Mm-hmm. So what, aside his pride of winning a Super Bowl now, what's the incentive? You're number one in sales. You're number one in merchandise. You're, number, you're the most valuable franchise. Yeah. How do you get better than one even when you don't win the Super Bowl. Normally, teams say, man, if you were to win, the fans will come. Well, the fans come even when they don't win. they still number one in merchandise sale when they don't win. Yep. So what's the benefit other than Jerry saying, I want another Super Bowl? Yeah. So now I'm starting to wonder if Jerry sort of sees the light at the end of the tunnel and he wants to create uh, a new potential dynasty that he can hand down to Steve and his son, mm-hmm. Charlotte, his daughter, and his other sons, and and... That, that it will go on in 
perpetuity mm-hmm. it built the correct way. Right. So, so they're like building from the bottom right now with no plunges, right. no risky moves. And so it starts to make me wonder, I don't know how much he cares about winning this year as opposed to long term so that he builds it the right way. But here's the thing, though, Skip. You got two of your best players, yeah. you believe, on rookie deals. Dak Prescott, mm-hmm. Zeke Elliott. Normally teams, you look at what Philadelphia did when they Carson Wentz. They plunged. They went and got Alshon. They did. They went and got some big name players they did. to put around it because they know. To. You know, Skip, when that balloon payment come due, mm-hmm. that's a $30 million, that's a hundred million fully guaranteed. So you better go ahead and plunge while you got Zeke and Dak on these rookie deals. Because that second contract, you're gonna have to blow it up. Yeah. There's no way you can keep those offensive linemen on their salaries and pay Zeke and pay Dak. Is it what, what you gonna do with Demarcus Lawrence, Skip? Mm. He wants he won't bread. He wants long, long paper. Yep. And he just saw what Geno Atkins got. I know. Geno Atkins in his 30s and got 16.3 a year. He's earned it. Mm-hmm. 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 They go, Jerry, you about to write a big check and not be guaranteed a Super Bowl because mm-hmm. you about to have to pay some of them on your roster. Yep. Realistically, how far away are they from winning a Super Bowl? Skip, I don't know, Skip, how far away are they? Earl Thomas. Hold on to him, Seattle. Don't let it go. No mercy. Now, the Eagles are the defending champs, so they got a lot of new perks, including a new Super Bowl championship sign in their locker room. But that didn't sit well with Malcolm Jenkins, who says he hates it. Jenkins explained his feelings yesterday. Take a listen. My focus is all on, you know, adding another eye to the, to the end of that. Um, and so it's, it's, it's great, you know, but that I'm well beyond celebrating um, last year's accomplishments because they don't mean anything this year. They don't, they don't get us anything. I said it earlier this offseason, it's not boxing where we get to hold the belt and somebody has to come beat us and take it. Uh, we don't have anything. <laughs> we're at we're the bottom just like everybody else. We're joined by Super Bowl champion James Harrison. James, should the Eagles take the poster down in the locker room? Uh, I feel the same way Malcolm feels. Um, you know, you, you have nothing. It, it started yeah. all over from, you know, the end of the Super Bowl until the beginning of training camp. That's your celebration time. Once yeah. training camp starts, it's over. You know, I, I won two Super Bowls, and of those two Super Bowls that we won, each time we didn't even make the playoffs the next year. Hmm. 2005, 2006, we missed the playoffs. And, and why was that in general? I feel like, like he said, guys were, you know, sitting on their morals. They, mm-hmm. they thought, you know what, it was just going to magically happen again. It was going to be the same way it was yep. last year. And what you got to realize is now you're the top dog. You're getting everybody's A game. Mm-hmm. The team that was 0-16 are mm-hmm. about to give you their best game, and you're going to think they should be making the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be able to just go out there and do the same things. You can't rely on the underdog thing no, mm-hmm. no more. You can't ride that. You right. can't ride the underdog no more. Right. You just won a Super Bowl championship. <laughs> everybody's after you. Yep, that's exactly right. I feel the exact same way. I was very fortunate. Won a Super Bowl in 97. And the thing is, Skip, you have to guard against a bunch of things. You have to guard against complacency. Guys like, oh, yeah, this is going to happen again. We just flipped the switch like we did last year. Now, they didn't flip the switch, but the year before, they were 7-9. You have to guard against injury. Carson Wentz gets hurt. They still want it. You have to guard against free agency defection. They're going to come get some of your best players because they're like, I got the Super Bowl ring. Now it's time for me to go secure this bag. How many rings can I eat? Mm -hmm. I need that paper now. So you leave with that. I just remember Mike telling us, guys, what we accomplished was was great. He said, but if you want to be remembered, you want to be special, you got to do it back to back. Because mm-hmm. a lot of teams win one in a row. So for us, we didn't have anything. Put that stuff upstairs. Let, fi- let, let Sue and Finance see it. Let Bob in accounting, let him look at it. Mm-hmm. What we had up there, we had a blank board, Skip. They put the, team, the opponent up there, and then after the game, win or eight, we had a, the, the score. Either it was going to be we won by three or four, or it's going to be we lost in the L. That's what we had in our locker room. Well, we didn't have anything in the locker room. We had that as you walk into the locker room. Mm. There was no Super Bowl. There was no parade. There was no confetti falling down on us, running on the field. There was none of that mm. because that wasn't going to help us repeat. That wasn't going to help us win any games this year. We, Like James said, we're getting your best. Everybody geared up. How do we beat the Broncos? How do we stop that zone run? And when we shut the run down, how do we stop Shannon, Ed, and Rob? Mm-hmm. How do we do that? So... That Super Bowl 52, that, that will have no bearing on the regular season and Super Bowl 53. Hmm. So what good is it in there for? Hmm. The re- they know they won it. You got the ring in the safe deposit box. You're probably going to wear the ring. So we don't need a reminder. 
I just need you to come to work and, and, and try to get me another one. Mm. That's what I need. I don't need no poster to remind me of it. So why did you put yourself first on that list of need to stop? Shannon, he, he was number one on the list. No, 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 no. Every defensive coordinator said, we got to stop. He said his own run first. He said his own run first. his own run first. No, no, no. They had to stop TD first. Okay. I got it. So, I will say this to your point about whoever it was, Bob, in accounting. I covered several teams in this league, and I'll – Pick two of them, the 49ers and the Cowboys, and to walk into those lobbies, not the locker room, yes. the lobby, yeah. and see those Lombardis staring back at you, it is impressive. Yes. I think it's impressive for the current players to walk in the lobby right. and look up and see all that hardware and all those accolades and all those pictures, and it's just history just slaps you in the right. face like, you got to live up to that. Right. Well, that works for me. But I get where you're coming from about the locker room because it needs blank slate. Right. Because you just start over. And I want to say this about Malcolm Jenkins. As a lifelong Cowboy fan, I find it hard to like anything about the Philadelphia Eagles because I just don't (laughs) like – I never liked them. I didn't like the way they handled themselves, operated (laughs) – under Buddy Ryan or whoever you want to throw Ever out since there. Buddy put that bounty out. I know, you I know. I never quite got over that one. Against a kicker? You're going you're gonna to eliminate the kicker with the bounty? Okay. So, Malcolm Jenkins is one eagle I have nothing but respect for because he it comes across to me, and I'm not inside that locker room, but I think he's the rock of that team. Mm-hmm. I think he is the ultimate leader of that team. He's also been a leader off the field in the, mm-hmm. the protest movement, but – when he speaks, I listen, and I think he has guided that team just the way you were a strong voice, both of you guys, mm-hmm. for that matter, in, in your locker rooms where when you opened your mouth, everybody turned their head. Oh, oh, he's, he's talking. Now, you talk maybe yeah, too had, much. You but, had to see what he was saying first. Yeah, you had to see <laughs> But, but when, when it was time to talk yes. and make a statement, you made a statement yes. that resonated mm-hmm through the newspapers and back into the ears and psyches of your teammates. And that's what that just did because I think he sees, wait a second, we're not going to have Alshon for whatever it's going to be, two or three games. Mm -hmm. And we might not have our young quarterback for several – I don't know how long he's going to be out. And so we're going to have a little quandary going on there. And we're not sure about Jason Peters and we're not sure about this and that. And all of a sudden, remember, that team was 7-9 and two years ago. And what else, Skip? He sees his quarterback, the guy that won the Super Bowl MVP yeah. Yeah. that might start the season. Yeah. He hadn't looked well in the preseason. Maybe we still celebrating. Yeah. Maybe we thinking about we going to Disney again. Or book tours. Everybody yeah, book bro. Tours. Hey. Foles is doing a book tour. The head coach is doing a book tour, right? You know what, Skip? The hardest about when you win a Super Bowl, everybody think they're most responsible. The grounds creepers no think they, they're most responsible because of the way they cut the grass. The grass is cut. The, 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cafeteria, the way they bring the food. Oh, that, that's what all oh, that good food we bring you. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to feel most responsible mm-hmm. for why you won the Super Bowl. But nobody wants to go back and put that work in to get back there. Bruh, it's harder. It's, yes. okay, you can sneak up on somebody. I, like, it's it's like, easy. You sneak up on them. But let them know you're the champ and try to stay up on top of that mountain when they're still trying to throw rocks and knock you off. Well, to your point, you did win back to back. Yeah, and I was still shocked that John said, "I don't want to try for the three P." Yeah, you know, because he he stopped, he quit, right? Last last repeat, o yeah. three o four, the Patriots. Yeah. Now we've seen teams have an opportunity. Patriots got back to the Super Bowl skip just this past year, couldn't do it. Seattle got back, got in position, couldn't. It's hard. It is hard mm. to do that. How did you guys do it? It didn't start out. That, it didn't start out well because John pulls his hamstring mm. the second game of the season. We had to go b- with Bubby Bristol for five and a half, four and a half games. Your favorite quarterback. <laughs> huh? Hey, Bubby, huh? you got a Ferrari. Just keep it in first. Mm-hmm. Don't grind the gears. Mm-hmm. That's all you got to do. Mm-hmm. Toss it to TD. <laughs> TD. When they shut TD down, we're gonna get one-on-one coverage. Ed Rod and myself, we're gonna beat one-on-one. Mm-hmm. Actually, we averaged more yards and more points per game with Bubby than we did John. Mm-hmm. But. We know we had. We had a man. We had a smoker skip. Mm. We had a smoker, mm. and it was easy hat day. If we win the game, we didn't have to wear pads. They had to wear pads for eight plays during the week and hat day on Friday. Mm. Don't mess up my hat day. So why wasn't a third in a row one? We lost. John, John left. Mm-hmm. TD got towards ACL. He, he did. At Water left. We just we had just two minutes. We weren't the same team, Skip. We weren't mm. the same. We weren't the same team. I would have loved to have John come back, but he was like. John hated to throw a wet ball, 
and they had been talking about it was going to rain during Super Bowl 33 the entire week. Mm -hmm. We get through that entire game. The Miami. Miami. Yeah, yeah. Skip the whole game. Beautiful game. As soon as we get into the locker room, a deluge happened. Yeah. I think he took that as a sign of God. I need to go. Really? I need to go. But a deluge had already happened in the other locker room because Eugene Robinson had happened to the Falcons. Well, I don't know, I don't know why right? they was. Hey. Uh, did that not help the Denver Broncos? And, and, and then people talk. Hurt. And, they, and they asked me, talk about, did y'all, we ain't sent nobody nowhere. Mm. We was in our hotel room having us a good old time. I know. Yep. Getting ready. Yep. Watching tape. And then we see that come across. I said, oh, they're in the heat patrol. They're I in the heat patrol. I, see that, I see that come across the bottom of the screen. <laughs> mm. Eugene Ro uh, Robinson arrested. Ah! Mm. I'm knocking on people. Man, y'all see that? Oh, yeah, we mm. got him. We got him, Skip. Yeah. Mm. Hey, had a nice trophy. Had a, had the Christian Man of the Year trophy in there. He hey, did. move that trophy out of the way and get in the car. Yeah. That's what he told you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he said that, Skip. I don't know if he said that. I might have made that a little he bit. Sort of said that. Yeah, he said right? something like that. Yeah. But the trophy was in the car. He's like, Move that trophy out of the way and get in here. Yep. Well, the odds are against the Eagles to win it all again. Yep. They just are. If they the Eagles, are. if the Eagles were not in the NFC East, you wouldn't say that. Yep, you're right. But if they weren't in the <laughs> NFC, I might not say that because the NFC is loaded. They loaded. It is, it is loaded. You got the Rams, you got the Saints, you got the Falcons, you got the Panthers, you got Green Bay, Minnesota. You didn't Cowboy. don't say Cowboys. it. Don't say it for me. Don't Cowboys. even give him that. But you not skip. Yeah. That was eight. Y'all were eighth. Mm. Eighth don't make the playoffs. Oh. Well. We'll see about that. You could be out serious, do if they do. Uh, I'm thinking no. If Jerry, that, Earl just... Thomas. No, 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 no. Best off not. No, we already tell. We had, we had an addendum. Oh. If you sign Earl Thomas, the bet is oh, off. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's not how other bets have worked. No, 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 no. Huh? Oh, you always. I say... lost Travis Frederick. What does that mean? The bets off? No, you didn't say that. Huh? You well, can't do that. I have huh? an addendum in mind. He, he's four-time Pro Bowler. Yeah, no. I lost him probably for the whole year. Who knows? No, you ain't lost him for the whole year. Mm -hmm. I believe they caught it in time. Okay. And with so modern medicine now, skip that. Probably gonna be back in no time. Look at this. Mm. What happened to those Steelers? No playoffs. Next well, Ben, well, playoffs. one year Ben, you know, thought he was evil Knievel. He did. We that, didn't lose him though. We we got him back for the yeah. season for that one. I mean, but he wasn't. He same. was a little, maybe been a little gun shy yeah. from it. But you know, at the same time, you know, the big issue was, you know, guys were thinking that you know what, it's just gonna roll over. Mm -hmm. You know, these mm -hmm. these teams are gonna lay down and. We get in there, and it's a team that we should smash, and we lose. Like, come on. Them teams, when you're the Super Bowl champ, you are the, uh, you are the team, a bad team. You're their Super Bowl. No question. So when you show up, oh, the crowd, the stadium going they crazy. Full. They got, they holding the Super Bowl. Like, y'all ain't going to the Super Bowl. We went to the Super Bowl, but they got their Super Bowl hat. They feel like we could have won because we <laughs> just beat the Super Bowl <laughs> champions. That's what they think. That's exactly how they think. So we all agree they should move the poster out of the locker room Absolutely. to the lobby? Definitely. Yes. All right, I yeah, agree. to the lobby. James, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. No mercy. Brown's offensive coordinator Todd Haley continues to be one of the stars of Hard Knocks. It replays tonight at 12.15 on HBO during the Browns' preseason game against the Eagles last week. Haley went after Jarvis Landry. Take a listen. Catch a ball and make a play. Catch a ball and make a play, please. That looks like Friday. What is Jarvis doing? Get out of Because if one of these young, young guys sees one time that you stop or don't go all out, then that's what they do. That's, I just see it over and over again. And we got to have one of them's got to elevate and help us. I'm sorry for yelling, though. Shannon, what's your reaction mm. to that? Haley and I would have had issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I can now you can see why Skip he and To butted heads. You can see why he and Anquan got into a heated heated conversation on the sideline. They almost came to blows. They did. A rookie, you can probably talk to him like that because he's happy to be there and he'll let you get away with that. But a veteran player, Skip, every play, you're not gonna make every catch. And just like you're not going to make every correct call, mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, man, I wish I had that call back against that defense. But, I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, 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 five, Tyrod mm -hmm. threw the ball out of bounds. Catch the, catch the ball? The ball landed it's six. Like 15 <laughs> yards over. <laughs> over his head, yeah. and it's six yards out of bounds. Um, you stop running. I don't, first of all, Jarvis Landry ran 4-7-7, with no shoulder pads, no helmets, trying to get a job. That's true. 
He make it seem like Jarvis is 4'3". Yeah. That's not his expertise. He's not a burner. He's not a down-the-field threat. Do you know what you have? You need maybe need to use him mm. in the role that you fell in love with him as. Mm. Yeah, he's playing outside the number, but that's not what Jarvis is, Skip. Mm. I mean, t- t- man, Todd need to calm down. He's going to yeah. give himself a heart attack. Mm-hmm. But that, that, that's too much. I, I, I couldn't take all that, Skip. And all that, cur- all that cursing, nah, bro. I mean, you're going to have to miss me with that. I thought about you while I was watching, and I thought, whew, would you have given this man a piece of your mind? <laughs> because this rubbed me the wrong way, and I don't even play, and I felt for Jarvis Landry, and I want to remind everyone, he was their biggest offseason acquisition, mm-hmm. and he took over the first episode of Hard Knocks with his profanity-laced tirade, his rant to the receivers about you got to play hurt, mm-hmm. you got to practice hurt, we got to do away with this contagious losing culture. The, the rookies last night made, made fun yeah, of it, but it, it, was, it was real and raw, and I thought it resonated. And to me, it felt like Jarvis Landry was becoming, with Tyrod, the leader of the football team. Right. He, he merely led the NFL in catches last year. Again, not in yards because he <laughs> doesn't burn, but right. he, he can get open underneath and little option routes, and he mm-hmm. can catch the football. He can catch it like his buddy from LSU, Odell. He can circus catch mm-hmm. it, and he's been yes. circus catching it in practice for the Browns. Well, you can't. Todd Haley can't undercut whatever credibility he has established as a leader of the team by just openly screaming at him right. and, and accusing him of quitting on routes, not running routes. It's, you can't do that to, to the new leader of your team. Todd, ha- Todd Haley overreacts to every play. It's like, is, like, is this a hard knock syndrome yeah. where, where you know you're on camera and you know you're, you're becoming a star on hard knocks, so you got to overact for hey, the cameras? Hey, hey, bro, let me holler at you right quick. Yeah? Huh? You curse at me one more time. Hey, you got it. Come on now. Yeah, and, and who is Todd Haley in the end? <laughs> because I'm going to remind everybody, his father played in the league, Dick Haley, mm-hmm. and his father became one of the great personnel directors in the history of the league because he was the director and draft master of the Pittsburgh Steelers from 1971 to 1990 through those glory years, through four Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. And that, Remember that 74 draft class yep. with four future pro football Hall of Famers? Lance Wine, John yeah. Starworth, Jack Lambert, and Web- Mike Webster. Yeah. The first four picks. Uh, work. Ends up in the Hall of Fame. Hey, that's pretty great. Right? That, that, that might be the, okay. the greatest draft cl- okay, so by his, a team. His father did that, mm-hmm. and then Todd Haley wasn't a football player. He played golf in college mm-hmm. at Florida and Miami and then wound up at North Florida and graduated. But he wasn't a football player. But because of daddy, he mm-hmm. got a chance. Right. And then he earned some stripes, and he's been pretty good right. along the way, and he's, he's made some. Didn't he draft Franco? I think Franco was in 72. He's another one. Yeah. yeah. No, he drafted all the. <laughs> I, I told you that that Cowboy Pittsburgh Super Bowl 13 yeah that was the biggest collection of talent I've ever seen on one football yeah. field uh, in large part because of the Steeler side yeah. of the field but the point is that's who Todd Haley, he came from Dick Haley right so really you, you are you that good are you that much better than Jarvis Landry is? sometimes they, they coach they want they like hearing their own voice man you know, and that, that makes them feel good but bro I mean that's an overreaction yeah to say that he quit on a route when he clearly he didn't quit on the route. And remember, I brought it up the next day on the show because I thought Jarvis, who can be tough on coaches because right. he clashed with Adam Gaze right. in Miami, right. and it's mm-hmm. sort of like in the end they fell completely apart and Adam Gaze didn't right. run him there anymore. But in this case, you, you, you got him. He was, he was your key acquisition, right. and he didn't stop on that route. So he was yelling back at Todd Haley from the field, and I thought, I mean, for, uh, to yeah, Todd Haley. Yeah. And, and I thought, well, is he already clashing with him for the wrong reason? But he was in the right. Yeah, he's like, what, what do you want me to do? I mean, if the ball's overthrown, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Keep the ball's like 15 yards over my head and eight yards out of bounds. What do yeah. you want me to do? Run all the way out of bounds for what, an incompletion? No, I see the ball going to be out of bounds. I'm stopping coming back. Sometimes I feel like Todd Haley and Greg Williams are competing to see who can yell the loudest, who can rant the loudest, you know, which yeah. coordinator can become the bigger star from hard knocks. Yeah, right? but the thing is, Skip, as a, as a veteran player, you, you talk to your position coach, you talk to your uh, coordinator, and you, you, know, you let them know. You know, for me, when, Brian, when I went to uh, the Baltimore Ravens, and Brian Billick, who was the head coach at the time, he asked me, he said, you know, okay, you know, what makes you tick? What makes you? I said, look, Brian, I got no problem with you correcting me in front of the team. I got no problem with you, you know, uh, uh, telling me what you need to do. But you can't curse me. Mm. That's it. 
That's those. That those are my only rules. Don't curse me. You well, can yell. Uh, you don't need to yell. Look, I know when I make a mistake. If you say, "Hey, keep your feet," you need to keep your feet on that one. Okay, I get all that. Yeah. But this every skip every time. Every Blake, make the block, catch the ball. Oh my! Finish the route. Ooh, really? man, that would get on my nerves. Jarvis Landry. No. So I, I was trying to read body language on Jarvis Landry when finally Todd Haley went to him and said, eh, I'm sorry I yeah. yelled at you. I, I don't know if he really accepted the apology, and I wonder what he told his wife when he went home. You know, like, did, did he really? Uh, he really, came without a shot of me. Yeah. Get you yeah, I know. Me. I, I just don't think he loved it. I just, no, no. I just don't think he did. And I don't think he just let it roll off his back and no. No. I wouldn't have. You know, I, oh, we'll have a talk. Uh, just have a talk to him and let him know what you expect. This is kind of what I expect also. We're not going to be yelling back and forth. Hard knocks is tough on a football team. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh-huh. Jarvis should have told him, I ain't going back and forth with you. Mm. You never know. They might be doing it for the camera, <laughs> as you mentioned. Well, up hey. next, Sinbad is here. We'll Uh-oh. talk to him about his new show, go. LeBron, and more coming oh, up. Got it on. No mercy. Actor and comedian Sinbad joins the show today. Let's listen to a clip from his new show, Rel. Rel, you know I said I got you? I don't got you. I told that yesterday. <laughs> your wife and your barber? <laughs> look dead. Oh, don't look dead at me. All that money I spent on you for glasses as a child? You didn't see this coming? You might as well be blind, Ray. Hey, 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 shh, shh. Keep it down, Dad. I want everybody in my business like that. Shh. Oh, 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 oh. You think I want people to know? You think I want to tell people that I raised a son with no It's a dark, dark day, Rail. You should be feeling all kinds of stuff. Pain that, you, that you, your family is gone and your life is ruined. Anger at your barber and your shortcoming as a man. Oh, go on, this ain't about you. <laughs> Most of all, shame. Deep, dark, horrible shame, man. It's worse than the day I found out that Nat was a crack dealer. It was extra. Same thing! Look, hey, I'm sorry, Nat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was cold. I'm sorry. All right? Actually, it's different. And that was a clip from the new show, Row, which premieres <laughs> September 9th on Fox. Sinbad, welcome to Good Undisputed. To and tell us a bit about the show. You no, know, the show was uh, Railman, who's just blowing up right now. And I, I play his dad, his light skinned dad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's, it's, it's uh, his brother, who's based on a lot of his real life, his brother mm-hmm. who did get locked up for dealing with ecstasy and, and, and Rail's life, Rail's mm-hmm. divorce now. What he's going through is, in this show, his wife slept with his barber, so it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's out there. And I play his dad, who's kind of like, He's not that like dad. Hey man, you'll be alright. He's like hard. You know, he's just 70s dad. Yeah. Mm. Like, get back up, man, and do your thing. So it's gonna be kind of fun. It looks funny. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's fun. Yeah. Go ahead. So you do have a certain It's LeBron, man. Let's yeah. just deal with yeah. it. It's LeBron, Let's baby. Let's just it's deal LeBron. with it. It's all about LeBron. <laughs> so before we get to the on the court stuff, uh-huh. you did watch last night's The Shop. I was I was episode. I was it's one of the shows when it got done, I said, Wow. Wow. I said, Wow. About time. Hmm. About time. It wasn't just a show, joking, sitting in a barbershop. They dealt with funny stuff. They dealt with social issues. They dealt with real stuff. They dealt with being an athlete. They dealt with, and then John Stewart was just moving it and shaping it. It was just, <laughs> it was fun to watch. I know a lot of people, you know, because the guys are cussed, they're like, oh man, what is it? There's going to be some people in America who, for a lot of them probably voted for Trump, but there's going to be a lot of people in America who are going to be thrown by this. Mm. Honest, an honest conversation. That's what you heard was an honest mm-hmm. conversation. Right. Guys talking for real. And we really don't like real talk. Mm. How did you think LeBron came off? Because obviously he's the centerpiece of the show. He's the centerpiece, but you know yeah. he did? He let it. He did. He let other people mm. play in his playground. But when he spoke, he spoke well. He spoke. He didn't. No, he didn't back up. Mm-mm. He didn't apologize for who he was. It was just, I was, look, I almost became a fan. Because, you know, I can't go with Draymond because he would go to state. I became a fan of Draymond. Stuff he was saying about LeBron. I was like, whoa. And a lot of people would be mad because Draymond was on the show with LeBron. But that was even deeper showing friendship athletes do have, that right. you compete, mm-hmm. you're gladiators, but we can come together on certain things. And that was, I was, I was like, man, hmm. this kind of messed me up. Is LeBron the voice? He seems <coughs> to be one of the major voices, one of the major players of the black community now. For he, so long, we've waited for an athlete yeah. of his kind of cachet to speak up for issues that people cannot be seen or heard can be, can be seen and heard. You know, remember, remember Bill Russell mm-hmm. and all those guys? Remember that picture of Ali, Bill Russell? Uh, 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 they, they, they were the all, summit, Jim Brown, the summit. The summit was... In Cleveland. They all knew 
You know, it's but like, they did. It's like I can lose the door. So it ain't about that. It was like this. I'm speaking up. I'm a man. Right. It wasn't even about what I lose. Like mm-hmm. the Bronx, I'm not worried about I lose. I'm a man. Right. And I'm looking at there's a book called The Forty Million Dollar Slave, mm-hmm. where they talk about yeah, the slavery's out. Yeah, they're paying you forty million, but sometimes we're still slaves. We saw what the owners were saying about taking the knee and all this. That that taking the knee thing revealed America. It revealed America, and it had nothing to do with reality. Because he was sitting on the bench at first, they asked him to take a knee. If they just left him alone and just let him sit where Colin was sitting, so when LeBron speaks, he speaks not just like, um, I'm just going to get on your case. He says something and walks away. You know, I'm saying this, and I'm going to go about it. I'm done with it. Yeah, I got this shirt, man. You know, you know, hands up. I'm saying what I got to say, now let's go play ball. But I'm not, I'm not going to just shut up and dribble. That was the dumbest thing. But that's the things we've heard all our lives. Right. Shut up and dribble. Just, just be good. Be, aren't you happy that you're making money? Aren't you happy? Like they allowed me to do something. Mm-hmm. You didn't lie. I took this. Right. You didn't give me anything. Mm. Kind of like Aretha Franklin's. Yes. Respect. For the longest time, people thought, oh, she was talking about, you need to respect. No, she's like, no. respect me as a black woman, Thank as you. a black man in America. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I need my respect. Thank you. Had to spell it for people. <laughs> Just in case they yeah. forgot. Put respect on yeah. my name. <laughs> so let's go on the court. Obviously, you live here in the L.A. area, yeah. and now LeBron James is a Laker. How it is that going to freak work Freaked me out. out. Yeah. Freaked me out. Yeah. I, I wasn't ready for it, even though I'm glad you know, he's here, because I, I said, it freaked me out. I said, man, can I put that purple and gold on? I haven't put it on since, Cope, since I'm, uh, Magic. Because mm. Magic from home, like Michigan. Yeah. So Magic was the yeah. last, you know. So you ain't, so you gonna put it, hold on, you ain't put it on for Kobe? Nah. What? Nah. What, Skip? Did you hear what he said? Nah. He says witness. So he said, he, Magic. Nah. Magic retired for Magic retired at the end of the 91 season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. he came back for a little while. So that's been almost 30 years since the man had a yeah. purple and gold. He's talking about putting the purple and gold on. I think we're the black one. I don't know if I can still put the purple and gold. I'm going to get the black uniform. Oh, you get a new one. <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> wear the black uniform. I, I wasn't going to get a black shirt that says, uh, I go where LeBron goes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to have his number. So when I go to the games, like, man, hey, you Laker fan? LeBron and the other fellas. Yeah, no. But I'm cool. We you know I'm cool because I like the young Lakers. I like these cats, how they responded to LeBron. I love Kuzma, man. We got that nine inch vertical increase. And mm-hmm. he changes lives. He's, to understand him, you got to watch that video more than a game. That explains he's more than a game. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, he didn't even ask for it. I think God preordained some things. That kid is who he is. And the coach who took them all in when he was 11, 12 years old, the, the, the college kid who was doing his thesis, filmed him. I'm said, it's not an accident. There was a reason. Ali's not an accident. Some people come along, your, your calling is bigger than others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You didn't pick it, it picked you. Hmm. So, what do you expect from LeBron and the Lakers this coming season? You know what's funny? LeBron is the only guy that could go to any team in NBA, you got hope. <laughs> See, when they talk about MVP, wait a minute. What's the MVP? The Grizzlies get LeBron, they're like, we're going to the NBA championship. Yeah. And, know they, and know they say, we need two more pieces. Yeah. Whenever you get LeBron, we need two more pieces. We get, yeah. we get two more pieces. We're two pieces away yeah. because he's taken, he's taken pieces of puzzle with puzzle missing and said, people said, there's no way they're going to go. They weren't supposed to go. Man, they, last year, man, we were all sitting here. Uh, what's my man with dreads on the other network? He said, uh, I'm, going, I'm sticking with LeBron. We got hope. I said, you're right. There's hope when there's no hope. When he went back to Cleveland, I said, oh, we're done. When he left mine, we're back to Cleveland. So I'm with you, man, but it's going to be four or five years. And then when he got there, I said, oh, he gonna, he's going to do it this year. He was like this. Oh, I don't know. I said, no. He's saying that, but I'm watching. He's going to do it. That year should be, one day they'll write about it. It'll be a documentary about that year. Mm. It'll be, that was the greatest show of an athlete ever. So is there going to be a doc made on this Lakers season? I think it will. I no. think it will because... Remember, he's, they're not saying, nobody's saying championships. Nobody talking about championships, mm-hmm. but we're feeling it. Ain't nobody saying it, but I, he's I think, here. I think you're about to say it. He, no, he's right? here. I'm like this. Yeah. I don't want to jinx it. Like, I didn't jinx it clean. I just, I want to watch it. I want to be a fan just, oh, we're going to win. I just want to, mm-hmm. I want to watch it because I know there going to be some other pieces. Right around All-Star break, something always happens around LeBron. Some dude shows up. You know, my grandma used to cook stuff, and she didn't keep every time she go lift the lid up, see if it's yeah, done. Yeah, she yeah. set that thing on the stove. Yeah. She set that temp just right and set it on the stove and just leave, let that thing marinate. Mm-hmm. We ain't going to keep talking about it, Skip. Yeah. I'm not going to keep telling yeah. you what LeBron going to do. He, does, he on the stove. I'm going to let it marinate. Mm. But I guarantee you, when that thing is done, mm. what is that? You go, what kind of gumbo? Ooh. What kind of gumbo? That's what he is. LeBron is gumbo. Mm. I don't know what all them pieces are. 
Mm-hmm. Like when they when Jr. came to New York, he said, "I'll take him." Yeah. Remember, I, I they thought there was Gumbo's punishment. about to make me sick. Yeah, I, don't know. You know? But I know, I know, I know you're sick, but I, I don't think you believe it. I think, I, I don't I think know. you go home. I think you got a LeBron shrine. Yep. I don't think you told nobody. Mm. But I think you got home. You got a little LeBron down, mm. and you bow down. But you don't have to talk about it here. You don't have to talk about it. He I does. Know. I know. I know. He, he I know he has one home. Yeah. He's got a LeBron he bubble head when he goes home. Yeah. He be, hey man, you home, Skip? I pat him on the head. Yeah. 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 I mean, Skip, you, you mm-hmm. already LeBron know. Blanket. I'm glad I finally got somebody to echo what I've been trying yeah. to get you to say for the for, for the longest time, yeah. Skip. That LeBron is he, he's that meal. He knows, Shannon. He's that meal, Skip. Mm-hmm. You don't know what it is. Skip but knows. But you just know it's good when you eat. You're like, oh, this was good. Skip I, knows. I just know that the Lakers are not going to get to the NBA. Yeah, they said about Cleveland too. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Wait, are you uh, predicting them? I'm I think predicting. You're predicting. If LeBron goes plays for the school of the crazy <laughs> kids, <laughs> with one can't see, one can't hear, and one can't play, they got that hope they got it. to they go got to. I, I will give you that. They got yeah. hope. See, I got my Michael shorts like you. I got Michael. Oh. And I got LeBron because you know why? Oh. My life is this. Bill Russell came my life first, then Will Chamberlain, then a man that changed my life totally was Dr. J. Wow. I wish people could see him in the ABA. That man. He, no, no. we talking about the greatest. I don't know why he's not in that conversation. Oh. I don't know why no magic's not in it. Then it came him. And then I, I'm watching this guy from Chicago. I said, damn, if he ever gets a team. Now that was a player. If he ever gets a team, he was a player. But when LeBron came, I said, oh. it was so much hype. I didn't know if he could live up to it. That, that rookie year in Cleveland, he was tossing grown men. I said, what kind of beast is this? Mm. When Charles Barkley messed up and said, when he passed that, the rock in that Cleveland game, and Barkley said, he's not a killer, and he went back and scored about 55 more points, mm. and uh, 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 Joe Dumars told me, I wish Barkley had never opened his mouth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So are you here to tell us that LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan? We say better. What we mean better? You when, do when have we say, I go like this. On. I, have, I have Michael. I have LeBron. There's that rare air. There's Michael. There's LeBron. I got to put Magic in there. I put Dr. J in that air because they changed the game. When you change the game, Magic was a prototype guard. Mm. Le- uh, uh, Dr. J probably affected all of them. Mm. You know, but LeBron, I ain't never seen nothing like this. So I think you just said Michael is better than no, LeBron. No, I didn't. And no, I think you also I said the this. Lakers are going to get to the finals I, I this say year. This. I'll tell I think you I heard that. If people love Michael, you should. If you believe Michael, because there's two of them. There's two rare cats. It's like, okay, you're talking about uh, Spider-Man and Superman. You like both of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can talk about Batman I'll, I'll take and everybody. Superman. But you know what? He got crept tonight. Yep, but, Bam. So, but Michael's Superman and LeBron's no, Michael was Spider-Man. Michael was Superman when he got the right team around him. Right. Mm-hmm. LeBron was no. Superman. Michael had but, supernatural but, powers. So did so Le- mm-hmm. LeBron has not mm-hmm. had, has. and he does has. it longer. And we don't know when he's gonna be done. So you're now, that's the freak of nature. Lakers get to the finals. No. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Yeah. Okay, good. We got him. They got just good chance. They got just fun. good chance. Anybody else playing this year? Okay. You better believe Golden State grabbed Cousins for a reason. Huh. They did this. They panicked. They said, "What." They all act like they was cool, but they're like, no, he, almost, he almost got us. He almost got us last year. Now, there's no doubt LeBron is going to bring magic here yes. to LA. Let's get, Thank let's you get so boogie. much for joining he's, us. But he's hurt. Sure I don't care. Check out Ralph starting September 9th on Fox once again. Sinbad, thank you for joining us. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Alex Curry in for Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports 1. Of one. Of one. Of one.